Hello, my name is Jacob Avila, and today I'm going to teach you how to do a fascia iliaca compartment block. Now, I want to get one thing out of the way. There are three ways that you can do blocks of the upper thigh. They're basically very similar, if not the same thing. However, there are a few subtle differences between them. The fascia iliaca block and the three in one block are very similar, if not the same block. There are little subtleties between them, but basically both of these are trying to target the same three nerves. That's the operator nerve, the femoral nerve, and the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. This is the block that I'm usually doing. It's great for hip fractures and proximal femur fractures, as well as anything on the anterior, medial, and lateral thigh, as far as the cutaneous innervation. If you do this block, the femoral nerve is also going to be targeted. This is why the fascia iliaca compartment block is what I'm usually doing instead of the targeted femoral block. Now, this one just targets just the femoral nerve. If that's all you want to block, sweet, awesome. Now, this works for mid shaft femur and the sensory innervation of the anterior thigh. So it's not going to do lateral, it's not going to do over here, and it's not going to do this medial portion over here. This is the operator nerve. So it'll just basically do this all the way down to the patella. I have done this block a couple of times for just knee dislocations. Now your probe of choice is gonna be the linear transducer or the curved linear transducer. Linear transducer has a higher resolution. The images are gonna look a little bit better. However, if you have a fluffier patient, you may find yourself needing to use the curvilinear transducer as well. But usually I'm going for the linear transducer. So here's a cartoon of the anatomy. Now this is a very similar area that you're gonna look for when you're looking for DVTs, but your focus is gonna be a little different. You know, for DVTs, you wanna find the vein over here should be a little more medial, but if we're doing a nerve block, we want to focus over here laterally. Now your femoral nerve is going to be this triangular structure over here. I know it doesn't look triangular here, but it does look triangular with the ultrasound. You see this line right here? This is the fascia iliaca, which sits right above the iliacus muscle. This is what we want to target when we're doing a fascia iliaca compartment block. Here's an ultrasound image. We have our vein over here. We have our artery. This is just past the split. And then this triangular structure right here, this is the triangular femoral nerve. And this white line here is the fascia iliaca. And that is really going to be our target is this fascia iliaca, not necessarily the nerve. So let me show you what the fascia looks like. Now, this one right here, this is the fascia lata. This is the first fascia that we don't really care about. We care about down here. This is the fascia iliacus. This is actually a person that I've already put a little bit of anesthetic in. This is the artery over here. Here is the femoral nerve. And I'm going to go ahead and fast forward just a little bit to about right here. Now, you can see my needle coming in on the left side. And I'm injecting right above what I think is the fascial iliacus. But as I'm injecting anesthetic here, and I am getting good spread, but look at this line right here. This is actually the fascia iliacus. And notice that I'm actually above the fascia iliacus here. Um, this is muscle up here. So what I want to do is I want to advance the needle just a little bit further till I get underneath it. So you can see I'm redirecting it, going underneath that, and then now, right there, I'm getting nice, good spread underneath this fascia iliacus, which is what my goal is. And you can see that I'm actually infiltrating. I got a nice spread here right on top of that femoral nerve. Now remember, my goal here is not necessarily getting to the femoral nerve itself. My goal is to get it underneath the fascia iliacus. Now, if I put a volume of fluid, and usually it's gonna be a little bit of a higher volume than you might do for other blocks, I'm usually doing somewhere between 25 and maybe even 40 cc's of fluid. Uh, underneath here because you want the spread. You want to make sure to get the obturator nerve because that does part of the hip joint itself. You want to get the obturator nerve, you want to get the femoral nerve, and then you want to get the lateral cutaneous nerve. That's basically all the innervation you can get. Now, the hip capsule itself does have some innervation of the sciatic nerve, but you'll get a significant, if not almost total relief of pain, especially for proximal femur fractures and hip joint fractures, if you do this block with a fairly large volume. Now with this, you gotta know about complications. Know that a big one, especially if you're doing large volumes, is gonna be last or local anesthetic systemic toxicity. I would not recommend doing this without the patients being on monitoring and without having the antidote for last, which is intralipids available in your emergency department. Make sure that you remember what the indications are. There are some things that this just won't work very well for. For instance, anything in the posterior thigh, this is not necessarily going to help very much. But if you have anything going on in the femur, the patella, you have some cutaneous lacerations in the anterior, lateral, or medial thigh, this will work great. And if you have hip fractures, that is femur fractures, so you have like an inner troch fracture or a neck fracture, this will work very well. 
And don't forget about the amount. Now remember, this is a large volume block. The anesthetic that you use doesn't have to be 40 mLs of ropivacaine. It can be 20 mLs of ropivacaine with 20 mLs of normal saline. You just have to make sure that you have enough volume so you can get good tissue spread. That's it for this week's 5-Minute Sono. Please feel free to send me an email or a tweet if you have any questions or comments. And don't forget to subscribe. Go to blog5 minutesonocom slash subscribe. Put in your name and your email address in little text boxes and never miss another video. And if you want these podcasts sent directly to your smart devices, just type in 5 Minutes Sono in whatever podcast service you use. Leave me a rating and a review and subscribe. Now, this stuff is all great, theoretically speaking, but if you want to do some hands-on scanning with us, Go to BenFest18 or CastleFest2018.com where we have a couple of local conferences that we do. Check it out.